I said, this is not challenging enough for me here at Food Service. In many ways, 46-year-old John Anton lives a very normal life. An advocacy specialist at the Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress, known as MDSC, Anton also interns at the State House and lives in an apartment on his own. I love to say this all the time, but I'm a workaholic. When I come home from work, I need to unwind and relax. But I'm always still in my suit and tie, I'm in front of the computer, and I'm still working away. Anton has Down syndrome. Thanks to early intervention and mainstreaming in the public schools, people with Down syndrome are living fuller lives than ever before. But back in 1965, when John was born, his mother didn't even know what Down syndrome was. We went to the library and uh, checked out as much as we could find. I read things that told me that a, a child with Down syndrome would probably not live past 17 or 18 years. I read that a child with Down syndrome would never throw a ball, and John's got gold medals for softball throws, <laughs> so that was wrong. A lot of the general thinking, whether it was said in words or not, was the ideal situation was to perhaps institutionalize them. Fortunately, the Antons met one doctor who suggested the family keep John at home for as long as they could, and they did. Jan was a pioneer, knocking on the door of the local Montessori school, asking them to let John into their program. By the time he was ready for first grade, the Massachusetts special education law had been passed, and John entered the Haverhill public school system. It seemed a little segregated. I was, first of all, devalued. People made fun of me. And people used to call me the word retard. He really liked going to school. He, he, in spite of some of the downsides, the teasing or the, or the uh, little, the, you know, the kinds of harassment and whatever that went on, he liked the socialization of it. I think a lot of his success has to do with the special education system in the city. I think they did a good job. Upon graduation, John began working at fast food restaurants and supermarkets. But soon, he let his mother know he wanted more. I said, this is not challenging enough for me here at food service. I said, I want to work with people with developmental disabilities. So the next step forward is make connections, go political, be at the state house, where our voice counts. Joe Bachman is John's service coordinator from the Department of Developmental Services. He just said to me, I just, wanna, I just want a job where I can w wear a suit and carry a briefcase. And I, and I knew what he meant by that. John is volunteering at the State House uh, in the office of Representative Santa Candra. Right now he's working on something called the Real Lives Bill. John's received multiple honors, the latest taking him to Washington, D.C. as the recipient of the National Down Syndrome Society Advocate of the Year Award. That fueled John's desire to take his political career a step further. A job possibility and opportunity out in Washington, D.C., moving out there, living out there and knowing the expenses that I need to have and being trusted. I am going to go further and further and further. And I'm just saying to myself, if I keep moving forward, no one's going to stop me. Do you need to buy juice? John's mother and a support person help him budget his money and plan meals at home. At work, John does it all on his own, meeting with other state representatives and lobbying for his cause. Joe Bachman says it's all part of a new approach called self-direction, people with disabilities making their own decisions. They want a life like you or me. People want to get married. They want real jobs, not just jobs at a, at a mar you know, market basket or Burger King, jobs that are more meaningful. And what does Bachman think of Mr. Anton going to Washington? Well, he wants to meet President Obama. And uh, we'll see, maybe. I wouldn't put it past him. As for his mother, her most difficult task has been letting go, something she wouldn't have thought possible 46 years ago. What he's doing now would probably have been 
the furthest from my mind, you know, looking for him to maybe have a happy life with work to do and surrounded by friends. But going in this direction would never have entered my mind. That's all John. That's John's goal, John's focus, John's passion, John's backbone. As was mentioned, John Anton is lobbying for the Real Lives Bill, which would give Massachusetts adult-age citizens with disabilities the right to make decisions about where they live and work. Lauren Beckham Falcone shares her mother-daughter daydreams when Chronicle continues. The Massachusetts Down Syndrome Congress began in 1983 when a group of parents wanted to secure the future of their children. Now, the nonprofit advocates for more than 5,000 individuals throughout the Commonwealth, says Executive Director Maureen Gallagher. We have educational conferences that bring the most important information about Down syndrome to people throughout the region. We have our Buddy Walk, which happens every October during National Down Syndrome Awareness Month, where the entire Down syndrome community comes together to celebrate the lives of people with Down syndrome and to promote acceptance and inclusion. The MDSC also lobbies to protect the rights of people with Down syndrome. This year, the group created a self-advocacy advisory council made up of six young adults with Down syndrome who tell the MDSC what their needs are and what they'd like to see in the future. People with disabilities don't want to be taken care of. They want to have choices. They want to make decisions about their future. So uh, these self-advocates are really the future of the whole movement. I know that we're all familiar with the legislators. At today's meeting, John Anton is encouraging the council to join him at the State House. Christopher May of Newton is thrilled to be a member of the council. It taught me a lot of things that I did not know in my life. And now, thanks to you and thanks to everybody else, I can make a change in our lives. Melissa Riley of Boxborough, a self-described political junkie, is an intern for State Senator James Eldridge. The 26-year-old says she loves the work and the social opportunities the council provides. Melissa recently put her self-advocating skills to good use. I graduated from high school, and actually that was a really big deal, because the high school where I went would not allow me with Down syndrome to graduate with my class. I said, no, I want to graduate with my, with my peers from kindergarten. But one of my fellow classmates did a student petition and we got like, a whole bunch of signatures saying that I or other people with Down syndrome should graduate with their peers. Melissa, now taking college classes, hopes to get her own place and continue to work at the State House. These young adults inspire parents like Lauren Beckham Falcone to look towards the future with hope. I see a really good future. Mostly I try I think of like hanging out with Lucy at Club Cafe when she's 22 and going maybe to Paris and traveling and doing all the things that the three of us, you know, Dave and Lucy and I will do until she can't stand us anymore.